Not so long ago, about half the population of Glasgow lived in districts like these. Whole families were squeezed into a single room. There were no bathrooms and the shared toilets were on the landings. From this overcrowding, children escaped onto the streets and used the dangerous back courts as playgrounds. When things get this bad, all that can be done is to pull the houses down and rebuild elsewhere. And that's what happened. From the early 1950s, brand new schemes such as Cranhill sprung up around the fringes of the city. Finding names for all of these new Glasgow streets must have been a major headache for the city planners. You know what the streets in Cranhill are called after? I don't know. Can Is that lighthouses? Lighthouses. They're lighthouses. Named after lighthouses. Scared of war, Longstone, Pear Rock. Every one of them was named after a lighthouse. Most of Cranhill streets are named after lighthouses. Bell Rock Street takes its name from the Bell Rock Lighthouse. An 11 mile boat trip from Arbroath Harbour. The Arbroath Museum, located in the former shore station for the lighthouse, has a permanent exhibition of its history. It's fitting that Cranhill's main street should be named after this famous rock station, the oldest sea-washed tower in existence. Two for two Bell Rock Street lay over there just opposite the gate of St Maria Garetti's church. When I was a boy growing up in Cranhill, everything was brand new. Crackling with hope and optimism. I can't believe that so much has changed in little more than 50 years, and that most of the buildings that I knew have long since been demolished. The Monarch Road shops lay just at the bottom of the lane down there. and Milne Croft was on the site of the new Cranhill Primary School. Just as much has changed at the other end of Bell Rock Street. There, all of the tenements have been replaced by self-contained houses. This is one of the new streets in Cranhill, Bell Rock View. It was built in the back field between Bell Rock Street and Bell Rock Crescent. <laughs> I originally came to Cranhill from Blackhill. Married in Stone Road, from Stone Road. I got a, a house in Skerryvore and then a house in Langness. When we lived in Langness Road, there was loads of tenements up here. No one liked these ones, but these ones have been done up. Straight up to the top of the street was a Skerryvore Road, and that was full of tenements as well. Right across the road was a school, that was St Gregory's Schools, and you had them playing football and other games in the fields, and plus you could see if your son and daughter was going to school or if they were dogging it. <laughs> I always knew that the streets in Cranhill were called after lighthouses. I've never been to a, a real lighthouse until recently. The Clough Lighthouse is easy to get to. On Clyde, just south of Fairwood. 
when these houses were first built, they all had flat roofs. Bray Street, Fastnet Street, Bell Rock Crescent, and Clock Street. Clock Street is one of the shortest streets in Cranhill. This is just a recent Modern's Primary School. How much has changed in Cranhill? How much has changed? If you want to get some idea of how travel in much of Scotland used to be, you could do worse than take a trip on the Corran Ferry. A lot of the old ferry crossings in Scotland have been replaced by bridges. Not so the Corran Ferry. It is one of the few remaining mainland vehicle ferries in the country. It crosses Loch Linney some nine miles south of Fort William at the Corran Narrows. The Ardgow Ridden overlooks its western slipway. If you look out starboard as the ferry leaves at Gower, you can see the Corran Lighthouse proudly guarding the crossing. Corran Street keeps watch over one of the first to be built parts of Cranhill. Although its houses have been reclad, the street's appearance has hardly changed over the years. Only saplings when the houses were built, the now mature trees in the square between Marlon Place and Coran Street provide a clue to the age of this part of the scheme. Someone new to the area could not possibly know that across the road from this bus stop lay the grounds of Cranhill Secondary School. The shopping complex was built on the school's sports field and running track, and the houses mainly on the site of the school itself. Keeping to Cranhill's naming tradition, these new streets, including Barnness Place, have all been named after lighthouses. Barnes Ness, where the name comes from, lies on the Firth of Forth near to the Bass Rock. The Barnes Ness light is no longer needed to guide ships safely towards the port of Leith. Nothing stays the same. Sometimes the names are the only permanent reminders of the way things were. How much has changed in Cranhill? How much has changed?